with the release of Baby Driver, it is the perfect time to rank all five of Edgar Wright's films, so let's go ahead and just get started. Edgar Wright's kind of one of the most exciting directors working right now, simply because he's a guy that has a very distinct style and sense of humor that he puts into all of his movies, and as of right now, from most people's perspective, he is betting 100%. He's making really good movies in different genres, but they all feel like Edgar Wright films. So with that said, before we go and start talking about and ranking these movies, go ahead and put your ranking down below in the comments section down below. Give me your thoughts on them, as well as any recommendations for future ranking videos you'd like me to consider doing. With all that said, let's look at how Rotten Tomatoes has ranked his movies. Coming in at number five is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World with eight. 81%. That's his lowest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes at 81%. Coming in at number four is The World's In at 89%. Coming in at number three is Hot Fuzz with 91%. Coming in at number two is Shaun of the Dead with 92%. And sitting right now at 97% is Baby Driver. Now, to be fair, Baby Driver just kind of came out here in the States. It is just kind of getting its global release. And so it doesn't have as many reviews counted for it as it will have in the end. So that'll probably drop down to like a maybe a 95. So <laughs> that's a really good score. And it might stay up that high. It was sitting at 100% for a while because it's a good movie. There's a good reason it's up there. It's a very likable, well-made movie. So anyway, that's my take on it. As I said, put yours down below in the comments section. And with that said, I'm just going to jump right into it. Coming in at number five for me, it's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, when I say this is number five, this is still a very good movie. So something's got to be number five. Something's going to be number one. This one happens to be number five, but I think this is a very cool movie. I remember seeing the trailers and being like, what is, what is this? And I was pretty busy in life at the time and I didn't really realize it was an Edgar Wright film from the guy that had done Hot Fuzz and so I kind of missed it and then I watched it at home video like well probably most of you guys and just watched it and was like wow this is a really cool movie and I just love the style of it the direction of it and the way the story's told and the way the scenes cut together the way the fight scenes are done and just the way it's like a video game. So many things about it are so cool. The reason it's number five for me is the actual story itself just feels overly long. It feels played out in you kind of, it's interesting kind of the setting up the world in the first act and then the second act when he starts battling the boyfriends, this is pretty cool. And then you start going, oh, this could get old. And then in the third act for me, it, it does get old. It does play itself out sooner than well before the movie ends I get it gets bored for me and I did rewatch it uh, within the last week and that's kind of where I felt again that's the way it felt when I previously thought I wanted to like double check and unfortunately that is where I did fall on. but it's still a very cool movie very enjoyable movie that's just a I don't like it as much as I want to like it but I would still be very positive towards it especially the direction of the way it's just such a really cool movie. I love that this movie exists. I actually did a, a series of kind of short videos for the church I was working at back um, uh, in 2011. And as I was trying to finish up the script and there's this big dodgeball fight at the end of this video I was doing, it was like actually 45 minutes long, so it wasn't all that short. But then there's a big dodgeball fight is kind of the climax of this video I was working on. And um, I watched Scott Pilgrim right before I filmed it and as I was finishing up the script for it, and I rewrote the entire third act of it to match kind of the style and the video game type stuff of Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And so there is a video out there in the universe that I made and there's like a five minute long cool um, uh, dodgeball fight Scott Pilgrim style sort of um, out there that because uh, that's how cool I thought the direction of this was really enjoyed it the story just overplays itself for me coming in at number four is The World's End Honestly, the first time I ever watched this movie was last night. It was the first time I ever watched it. I just missed it once again. I was busy with life when it came out, and there's no reason I didn't see it. It just didn't happen until last night. Finally watched it, and like all of his movies, I really enjoyed it. And just seeing these characters that he writes with these actors um, just all kind of comes together. You in, like enjoy spending time with them, and even you know, in Simon Pegg paying kind of a kind of a dick that you don't really like all that much, still has a charm to him and a charisma. And the thing for me, especially watching this one, that very much the story of it ties back to these guys that were high school friends looking back on life and where they are. And for me, I'm just a few years away from my 20 anniversary of uh, um, 20th reunion. 
I'm graduating high school and things that I like the music I liked and the things that all my high school memories are all turning 20 with each passing day that happens. And so a lot of that, I could resonate a lot with the sort of stories in it, the way that you have fallings out, but there's people you still care for and uh, these sorts of things. You want to relive something that you can't relive and you're not the people you were before. And so all those sorts of elements into it really kind of worked for me. And I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of the, just the exploration because I could just relate to kind of what was being talked about. Uh, the actual invasion storyline with these alien robot things, I didn't, wasn't as crazy about that one as some other of his other films, but still a very cool, enjoyable film. Was, I was watching it and my wife came home and I like when I'm, you know, two thirds of the way through the movie. And so it's just absolutely bonkers by the time she gets home and she walks in and she's, hey, look, it's the guy from the office, uh, the British office. That's cool that he's in this. And then his head gets smashed in. Whoa, what's going on? What are you watching? It's like, uh, it's, it's hard to explain. It's an Edgar Wright film. Coming in at number three on my list is going to be Shaun of the Dead. And this is one of those movies that, uh, I mean, just this is a perfect way to both spoof a genre, deconstruct the genre, and just make a love letter to the genre, which kind of all these Cornetto films kind of do that. And this one just kickstarted just such a cool mix of genres of it is legitimately a zombie movie, and it's also a comedy. And all, each of these elements work together. Now, I, I've heard even, even the last couple of days, a couple of people talking about they don't quite connect with his stuff because the tone feels uneven. And I would really disagree with that. I mean, actually, I read one, one comment. I said it as if that was like a general statement. I read one comment, someone, someone saying that they didn't particularly care for him. And I pretty strongly disagree with it for the simple fact of the matter that I think he masters this idea of these meshing of tones. And so it's zombie comedy action and they're all in there, but it works. It has a tone in and of itself that is able to pull all these different elements together. And this one kind of being the freshest of the bunch as it's the first time kind of all these people come together and, you know, looking back on it 13 years later, to some extent, we, we, we forget just how cool this movie was and how fresh it was when it first came out. Now that they've done you know, the whole Cornetto trilogy and some other places have tried to do this sort of thing, even like on the show Community, there's some similar sorts of, of a serious uh, spoof type storytelling of this nature in some of the episodes. And you forget when this came out, how kind of groundbreaking and unique and interesting it was, uh, kind of kickstarted some things and even, I debated having it higher up on my list. It's one I don't watch as much because my wife's not really into zombie stuff, so didn't quite get into this one as much for that reason. But that's, you know, if it was just me, it might be higher up on my list. Coming in number two is Baby Driver, the one that I just saw also yesterday for the first time. I guess I had two different movies on this list that I watched yesterday for the first time. Um, but I was just really, I'm just very excited that we're having a resurgence of mid-range budget crime action thriller heist type movies. Not each one of those in all the movies, but you have the John Wick's action movie. You've got this one as the heist movie. Uh, you have The Account last year, which more cerebral thriller with action elements. But that mid-range budget done by great directors and this being another example of a return of a type of movie that has been less common over the last bit of time. Like a lot of people have been unhappy that Edgar Wright didn't do Ant-Man, but that's kind of the pattern that Hollywood's been doing, well, taking directors like Edgar Wright, and instead of letting him do his original own thing, like Baby Driver, which we did get, pushing him towards doing franchise movies, and those franchise movies end up getting crushed through the um, franchise machine, and Edgar Wright didn't want to do that. He actually, I guess he released in an interview re real recently that that's what they wanted to do is script rewrite without his consent, like, we're gonna do a rewrite without you. And he didn't wanna do that. He wasn't comfortable with kind of them taking over some things. He didn't wanna be a director for how, and that's kind of why he left. And you can see why that's a really good thing, why he should be doing his own movies because the movie we did get was Baby Driver, which just looking at a plot synopsis, you'd go, okay, and a generic heist movie with a quirky lead character. 
And then you watch the movie and it's so much more than that. It's so much more interesting to that because of what he brings to the table when he can kind of do his thing and go with his instincts and uh, just a very cool movie with a great cast. Each of these cast members are given a character that's interesting, that's fun, that what you might not like them, but you like them on screen. And then they gel together so well. And so you take a generic story and then you make a very vibrant fun movie out of it that I think a lot of people are going to like and I you know actually can't wait to watch it with my wife whenever it comes out on home video or maybe we'll actually be able to go on a date night to go see it in a week or two so very cool movie but with that said my number one movie is going to be Hot Fuzz you know I'm an action movie guy as I just said I'm very excited about kind of these mid-range action type movies making a return and Hot Fuzz is like a love letter I don't know if spoof is not really the right word but poking fun at kind of deconstruction of these action movies that I love. And it's just so many little callbacks, references to them. And to do this, they get Timothy Dalton in there and just making for a wonderful set of characters. As with all these movies, these characters or these actors playing these types of characters together just make for a, like an environment, a world you want to be in just to like hear them talk, hear them have fun. And so that's even kind of in deciding which one of the Cornetto ones kind of go where. It's almost for me just picking between which genre that they're having fun with is the, based on, they're really ranked based off how interested I am in the genre. So movies about the world ending, I'll put that one at the bottom. Zombie movies, I'll put that one in the middle. Just kind of straight action movies, that one's on top. That's how I would rank those genres and how match, naturally drawn towards them I am. And... They're, they're kind of all equally really good to me. I just like action movies more. And so this was just a really cool movie and that that it's a legitimately good action movie when it does the action and it's good at having fun with the, the cliches and it's good at just the humor and the banter. All the elements come together to make it just for a very fun, a very cool movie. So anyway, that's my ranking of the Edgar Wright films. How about you? Tell me your thought down below in the comment section. I imagine everyone's list is going to be different because they're all really good. They're all and they're all interesting. And like the Cornetto ones are all very similar in one sense, but they're all different in that they're different genres and having fun with different things. And so his movies, while there's only five of them, I, I'm guessing I mean, th th they're all good. So we're all going to have different opinions. That's going to be a lot of fun. Tell me down below what you thought about it. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, ranking videos like this every single weekend, tying back to whatever new franchises come out or what directors put something out. Try to do that every single weekend. But really, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.